Welcome to Dark Table. In this tutorial, we're going to take a picture, a base picture, and take it from the starting point that looks like this to the final developed image. You can find the RAW file in the video description, and we're going to see quite a few techniques starting from some basic modules in the dark room and working our way up to the final result without too many changes. Let me go back to the light table, the place where you find and arrange all of your pictures, where you can add metadata and all, which I don't recommend doing in here because uh, Digicam is much better for that. But I'll duplicate my picture to start with. And on the duplicate, I'm going to remove the history stack in the right column. That way we start from a clean slate. Now you can double click on the picture or press D or click on darkroom to head to the darkroom. This is where we develop our image. To start with, we are only going to work with the basic modules category because I want to show you really with only the basic tools, you can already develop most of your pictures. You can get 90% of the way there. Here's how it looks at the start or with the base curve applied and the final result with only three modules. It's important to keep that in mind to save time. Not all our pictures are equal for some of them. It's worth spending a lot of time trying to fine tune them and all, but most of the time you should only add some basic retouching, make them just pop a little bit and share them as is. Save more time to go take better shots outside. Like you don't want to spend hours fiddling with millions of parameters because Darktable surely as a professional tool it gives you a lot of flexibility in your pictures. You can really control details and you don't want to get lost into that. That's why I'm making this tutorial. It's really to show you start with the basics and later you can build from there. Now this is true for many domains. With drawing you want to start focusing on the structure and getting this right before you build tons of details on top of it. I have the same thing with music production where when you edit some music and then you want to mix it, you want to make some sounds pop and all that, before you add any effect, you just want to work with the volume and the pan of every channel. That is where the sound comes from and how loud it is. Really, if you start to add filters and effects to fix that, you're going to spend so much more time. There's a reason why in Darktable, from left to right, you will see different groups of filters, starting with the basic group, the one where you want to get your picture right at this point, most of it at least. Then you will find the tone group to modify the value contrast a little more. Not only that, but mostly that. Then the color group, you can do color correction there. You can start to add blues into the shadows and all that stuff. You will find a correction group where you can remove uh, red eyes. You can sharpen, denoise your picture. And finally, the effects group where you can add bust effects on top of all the other filters. Note, we need a few modules to get started. Make sure you have them. So you have contrast brightness saturation, Shadows and highlights, crop and rotate, okay, base curve, exposure, highlight reconstruction, and white balance. These are the ones I use pretty much all the time. And if you don't have one of them in here, click on the more modules menu option at the bottom and search them here. So the modules are arranged alphabetically. Make sure that you are on the basic group category here that's active and go find, for example, contrast, brightness, saturation. If it's black, if the background of the module is black, it means that it's currently not available, not loaded in the interface. You click once to load it in its corresponding group. In this case, contrast, brightness, saturation goes into the basic group. And if you want to add it to the favorites category, then you will click on the module once again to add that star next to it. Now you can see in my favorites, I have contrast, brightness, saturation, which I'm going to remove from there, by the way. Just want it in the basic category. Note that when you add one of these modules, say I want the colorized one, when you click on it, 
Dunk table will automatically jump to the tab where it was added so that you know where you can find the module in question. And once you're done, you can fold the more modules Docker. On the left side, you will find the image's history. So you can see a history of the change and the basic modules that are active on pretty much all pictures. You will also find a color picker, some image info, and the mask manager, which is where you can select and edit all the masks you create, uh, reusable masks. Then on the right side, you find the modules. The modules are the individual filters that allow you to modify your picture. Let's take exposure, for example, a very basic one. When I turn it on, it doesn't do anything because at the moment, the sliders are set to zero. But as I drag the exposure up, you can see the lighter parts of the image get lighter. And you can see that thanks to the histogram at the top. Then I can move the black point up to tell Darktable that I want a lighter value, a lighter light level to correspond to the color black, which is why the darks are becoming darker if I pull it up. And if I pull the slider down, on the other hand, the dark tones will become a bit washed out. Now, you don't have to use the exposure module to modify the exposure like that. We can fold it. Instead, we can interactively click and drag on the histogram. So on the left part, you will drag the black point, and this makes it a lot easier to make the darks a bit lighter and vice versa. So I want the darks a little less dark to start with, and I don't want the sky to be too, too bright, right? So I'm pulling the exposure down a little bit until that big curve, that big spike in the higher lighter tones falls down to something a little lower. And you can see the blues here on the rightmost of the exposure range. I want it inside of the range if possible. This mostly corresponds to the sky in our picture. And you can see as I drag the exposure down, the sky becomes a little more vibrant, a little more saturated. Now, the exposure is here to give you a base where you can get most of the colors in your picture, in the histogram, and then we're going to use other modules to modify the contrast a lot. Note that I've modified the exposure in two different places, so I get two steps in the history for the exposure. You can compress the history stack and they will be merged together. When you click on that button, it reduces the steps in the history stack, but doesn't change the picture. It may change the order of some things in the history. Well, what you modified last comes at the top of the history. Um, but aside from that, it will retain the image's look. In the history, you can also go back multiple steps in the program. And when you compress the history stack at that point, it will discard everything you did after that step. There's one module I want us to change, and it's the base curve, because there's some issue with our base curve at the moment. The image should not be that dark by default. So if you expand the base curve module, while still in the basic group category, the darks here are darkened. That's what the start of the curve shows. And this is a default curve that Darktable will use because I have a Panasonic camera. If you have a, something like Canon and all, normally it should use a different preset. So you can right click on any module's name to see the preset. And the one in bold is the one that Darktable is using now. So if you have a Canon camera, you will get that curve by default, most likely. Now the problem is for some shots for me, the Panasonic preset works most of the time, but in the morning and at night, sometimes I get these really dark results that are different from what the camera shows me. Uh, thankfully, we can control that fully. So I just want to right click on that point to remove it and get a slightly more washed out start picture. I like to have that slightly washed out result and to pull as much light information into that visible range I see on the histogram. And from there, I'm going to pull the black point again down to get a little more darkness once more. And I'll put, pull the sky to darken it a little bit more. We already have a better base than we had before. 
Note that now we have duplicate steps for the base curve and the exposure. Compress the history stack and they will be merged together. So that is our starting slate. The shadows are too dark, the highlights are slightly too bright for me still. So the next module we'll look at is shadows and highlights, a basic one that I absolutely love. This one will allow you to control your shadows and your highlights separately. So just by activating it, you already get a much sharper and a much more contrasted but also evened out result in terms of lightness. And if we expand it, we have two sliders at the top to control the increase in luminosity in the shadows. So if we pull that slider up, the shadow area becomes brighter and brighter on the entire image, by the way. And for the highlights, same thing. If we pull it up, we can blow them up a little bit. And if we pull it down, we'll lower the highlights. Notice one thing, you can see in the sky, as I pull the highlights down, there's some kind of blur around some areas. That is what the soften with filter controls and the parameters you will find below it. So the, the soften radius and the compressed value. By default, it's using a Gaussian blur with a radius of 100 pixels, I guess. We can increase and decrease the radius to modify the range of that blur. In general, you can't make miracles happen, like completely pull the highlights down like so. It will not work so well with that tool. You'll have to use some other tool. You use highlights and shadows to correct an already pretty decent picture and make it look even better. So you don't want to lower the highlights too much. Let's look at, again at without the filter and with the filter looks a lot better. I want to pull the shadows up a little more. So I want these trees to be dark, but to still don't be too, too far from the brightness of the pagoda in the center, because we can use some other filters to then like add some gradient and add some darkness in specific areas and add some vignette effect to darken all around the picture and kind of frame our pagoda a little better. So regarding the softening, you can see if we don't pull the highlights too far down, we can barely see the difference because the softness is pretty high by default. You want the artifacts in your shadows and highlights with the default settings most of the time and you only want to modify the softness if you need to really fine tune those transitions on specific pictures with uh, very high contrast areas, for instance. The last basic one I use is contrast, brightness, and saturation. And in general, I'll use it to increase the default saturation because I like my pictures to be colorful. So this one, um, it was vibrant in real life, looking with your eyes. The camera cannot capture that by default necessarily. And again, I tend to work with slightly washed out cameras. You want to increase the saturation a little bit to restore some of what you could see. And you can use the contrast slider to increase the contrast as you'd expect. As you increase the contrast, the highlights and shadows get farther apart. You can see that on the histogram at the top. I'm going to increase it just a little bit. There you go. And then and the brightness slider will globally increase or lower the brightness of your entire image all at once. But it tends to pull the lighter colors maybe a little bit more than the darker ones visually. And now we can compress the history stack and go back one step to see the difference. So before contrast brightness saturation and with it. And before our shadows and highlights as well and with our two new modules we've already developed our picture like most of the work is done at this point and that is it not bad right with only a few changes that with practice you can make in one two minutes we go from a really dark washed out image to kind of what i could see the, the experience i could get in reality looking at 
we go from a really washed out image, something that's way too dark, to something that's closer to what I could feel and see in reality at uh, six in the morning, something like that. All that with basic changes. Be sure to like the video, to leave some comments, to tell me what you'd like to see next, although Darktable is not the focus on the channel at the moment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There will be more tutorials about open source programs. That's what we do here. That said, thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.